Joining us today on the Yellow Smart Report and Money Talk Radio is Robert Rolfing, CEO of Desert Mountain Energy, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as DME, and in the U.S. on the OTC as DMEHF. The company has established itself as a pioneer in helium and natural gas exploration, with its flagship focus now on New Mexico projects near Roswell, where Desert Mountain Energy is advancing production, AI-driven extraction technology, and long-term supply agreements. Robert, welcome back to the program. Great to visit with you today. It's been a while. It has. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate the opportunity. Just because it's been a while doesn't mean that you have not been busy. Look at this. This release just out. Desert Mountain Energy signs an LOI for SNC Battery Plant in Roswell, New Mexico. And if you don't know what NSC stands for, audience, it's the Sodium Nickel Chloride Battery Manufacturing Facility in Roswell, New Mexico with Altec Batteries. How did this happen? A lot of great conversations, and Ellis Yuma gave us a great connection. It was critical to all of that, and we're deeply appreciative of that connection. The correct people working together made it work. A willingness to work together, number one. Let's review this just a bit. You and I were having a conversation about the water there in Roswell, and one of the byproducts of taking that water out of the ground was was salt, and a fair quantity of it, correct? The produced water in that area. If you think back of what regular fresh water weighs, about 8.34 pounds per gallon, and the water in that area typically weighs between 9.8 and 10.2 pounds per gallon. So what makes up the difference? It's salt is the vast majority of it. So it's about one and a half pounds of salt per gallon of water. That's what's coming out of the ground. That's huge. And with the most of the oil production. So then what's in that other two tenths? I was intrigued by that because when you really start looking at that, okay, so you have a lot of salt and there's maybe 10 to 20 parts per million lithium. That's not enough to do anything with. So what do you do with everything else? What is the rest of the constituent? You get into all the REEs, the rare earth element, which the government is all over trying to get their hands on. So it makes just very sense. If you're already producing, if to number one, stop the heavy drawdown of water, of fresh water out of the aquifer for an AI data center for cooling for the power generation, why not use this water? Now, the way the rules and laws are in the state of New Mexico, you can't use produced water to go back into agriculture or for other types of things. However, in a closed loop cooling system, which is what this would be for the AI data center, it's total closed loop. They don't use geothermal. It's all closed loop. You don't have any of it going on the ground. So how clean does this water have to be? That becomes an issue. The water that you have to have in a closed loop system has to be deionized, and it actually has to be cleaner than the water you drink. You have to really get all of the impurities out of it. Well, by the time you do that, you have no salt left and you have no REEs left. What do you don't do with it? There's the next question. Most desalinization plants take the water and for every 100 gallons of water, you end up with 54 gallons of usable water and between 44 and 46 gallons of a very enriched brine that you now have to re-inject into the ground. My issue with that is why even re-inject it? You can do it. They do it all the time, the oil patch, but why? It costs money to re-inject. It is cheaper. It's cheaper if you go out and you just finish cleaning the water up and pull everything out of it. You recover all the heavy metals. You recover all the REEs. You recover all the salt. Well, what do you do with them? Most of those other systems do not dry it out. There's only four companies worldwide that have a total dry out system. Two of them are the most viable and they require energy. What's the cheapest form of energy out there to make this work? Natural gas, generate power. That's it. We have everything that is needed right there on site. You don't have to recreate anything. So then you can use that. And then what goes into their Altex batteries? Alumina, a very powdered form. And then they have nickel. So it's sodium nickel chloride. The nickel, we don't happen to have that, but those are used on the anodes. Well, they can come up with that. Everything else is sourced right there locally. 
in New Mexico. So you cut down the transportation costs are gone. You put everything right there, your energy, your transportation, and you have labor all right there. It works. So Alice, it gets to, you cut down on the normal aspects of all of the cost in dealing with any form of business. You have everything local. You're not paying for a lot of transportation cost. You have your energy. And most importantly, you have a workforce there. And so you can help supply good paying jobs to people. It, this is a win-win. I had been chatting with Altec Batteries probably for about three years now. We talked a couple of years ago about doing something in the U.S. I said suggested California at the time. This was before you and I had even begun discussing New Mexico. And as soon as I had mentioned Desert Mountain Energy and your project in Roswell, they lit up. They lit up because of the location, because of the workforce that you mentioned, and the brine and the opportunity here in the U.S. And several other Australian companies are looking for a foothold, and many have a foothold here in the U.S. in the REE space, but you're opening up one for REEs and sodium chloride. And they will build that battery plant. They'll do it here. They'll do it in New Mexico. Well, that and with the REEs, everywhere else you're having to physically mine, basically. Physically blast rock, go underneath, whatever. Here, you're pulling it out of the water. Is it as high of a concentration? No. But when you're running eventually millions of gallons through it, it becomes cost effective on a very much smaller scale because you're not going underground. You're not doing an open pit. You don't have tailing piles when you get through. Nature has already concentrated this down. You don't have to recreate the wheel. So correct me if I'm wrong, but there's nearly no environmental hazard involved here at all. That's it, because everything you dry it, and the REEs themselves, all of which will have, it'll include the platinoid and whatever heavy metals, all that goes into, it's dry, it goes into drums that are sealed, you put them on pallets, and they're easily handled, they're taken somewhere else to be refined, so you don't have the dust blowing, you don't have to use cyanide, leach to extract stuff it's just a much cleaner operation is it a cure-all for all REEs no but in this area it is an answer for this so why not use it I noticed in the news release that you mentioned the economic benefits for Roswell and the state of New Mexico and there's the Genesis Mission Executive Order from the White House when you look at on the national level that edict came down last week from the White House that is not by accident what they are trying to do for AI data centers and for or REEs. How do you incorporate that? And a lot of discussions have taken place with a lot of federal agencies to get to this point. We're not the only ones out there on this. It is helpful to have their offhand backing on this. For the state, we have already had discussions with the state of New Mexico, and we don't have more. You do not just walk out there and throw this out. This requires time to work with it. This is one of those aspects for the state of New Mexico. It helps give them how do you deal with produced water from oil and gas that's real? A lot of people have wanted to try to do things within the industry, but until now, you really didn't have all the technologies aligning to make this really work. And you have to have the extraction processes that have now been improved so greatly. And a lot of it has to do with computer and sensing and everything else. And then how do you have like company like Altec come in? They've made great gains in that to create a battery that can't burn, can't explode. It's safe. When you're done with that battery, unlike lithium, ion batteries that you end up with a possible environmental aspect to it. What do you do with it? You reprocess it. You open it up, take everything out, separate it, reprocess it, and put it back in the container. How many other batteries can you do that with? You're not left with a hazmat waste sludge. You just reprocess everything, add to it, put more aluminum and new nickel cathodes in it, and you're off to the races again with it. And it's without creating a new environmental nightmare for someone. Let's not kick the environmental can down the road for another generation. Let's just handle this now. The technology is there and it's cost effective. 
Does this technology that Desert Mountain Energy and Altec are embarking on, is it transportable? Can you take it to the rest of the Permian Basin? Can you take it to the San Juan Basin? You're an oil and gas guy. That's your background. What's the future of this beyond Roswell, if there is one? It's really dependent upon, number one, the type of processing facility you have to process the water. You have to have cheap natural gas. You got to have energy. It's like everything else. It runs on energy. You have to have cost-effective energy. So that means you have to have local nat gas for it. Either that or nuclear. Yeah, that's too cheap a thing. And nat gas is a whole lot cheaper than a nuclear reactor. It can be expanded to other areas where you should be able to create more of these batteries. Because you look at, again, they can be put into to, just for an example, here in Arizona, Arizona APS and the Salt River Project, both power companies out there, they have built a lot of power supply and batteries that have the use of lithium ion batteries for help for peak load. In California, they're doing that. In different areas, they've tried it. And other states where they've done it, they've had fires with the lithium ion. Once a lithium ion battery starts on fire, it actually generates its own oxygen within, and it just makes it really hard. You got to use purple K and other type of things to put it out. It's like trying to put out a magnesium fire. Very hard. Well, here, they have tested this. They've shot them, put holes in them, dropped them in water, done all sorts of things, and they've proven you don't have a fire. You don't have environmental mess afterwards. You just stay away from that. So it makes it very cost effective. Lithium ion batteries require energy just to keep them cool. These don't have that heat temperature range. They will work in a broader spectrum of batteries. And so that's one thing I really think they have really hit on. Altex done a great job of designing this. And it's like, how do we put in the most cost-effective turbines to generate electricity. And because we're not having to deal with huge amounts of electricity for them, for their project, it makes it simple. You can use very high efficient and very cost-effective small gas turbines, which are readily available. To be clear, Altec Batteries is constructing a $170 million SNC sodium nickel chloride plant in Saxony, Germany, underscoring the technology's growing commercial relevance. This is not something that they have to build from scratch in New Mexico. They know what they're doing and you will reap the benefits of that. More importantly, New Mexico will reap the benefits of it. Well, you know, we could have had this in perhaps another state, but this is really the state that has gone out of their way to try to embrace this type of forward thinking instead of shutting the door on helium production or trying to make it real hard to do that. Here it is, and they understand they have natural resources, and you have to be a good steward and responsible of that. And they're appreciating of that. And what they're, we're trying to do and go forward, we're looking at creating opportunity zones for this. And everything that goes with that is really helpful for generating high-paid jobs for local, which is the whole key. Well, I'd certainly like to, and I'm sure you would too, congratulate Michelle Lujan Grissom, the governor of New Mexico, for her own initiative in this arena. I would, and her staff. You look at the rest of the staff involved in this, rest of the Commerce Secretary, the Energy Secretary, the entire staff there has been very forward thinking on this. And it's like, okay, this is something we can embrace. And it's a lot more fun to be working on the positive side instead of always on the, the what if negative side of oil and gas and just hydrocarbons in general. Here is something that is a real solution, and you're not having to put things back in the ground. What are the next steps, Robert? Working with the state and feds to work out the final aspects of this and working with Altec in conjunction with Altec as to develop the final form of joint venture, how we put it together. Robert, thank you so much for your time today. It's been great catching up with you. I'm very excited about this. As you know, I look forward to our next conversation. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate it. You have a great day. I've been speaking with Robert Rolfing, CEO of Desert Mountain Energy Corporation, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange as DME and the U.S. on the OTC as DMEHF. With helium and natural gas projects in New Mexico, including offtake agreements tied to Roswell's growing AI data campus, Desert Mountain Energy is positioning itself as a long-term supplier of critical energy and industrial gases. Go to the company's website, DesertMountainEnergy.com. 
This is the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio. Desert Mountain Energy is the paid sponsor of the Ellis Martin Report.